is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing else to say. Wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. Ten months, ten tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV. It's time to take control of your journey towards chess mastery. Magnus Carlsen introduces Chessable, the definitive solution for studying chess. Move Trainer uses the science of spaced repetition to identify your strengths and eliminate your weaknesses. There's no need to set up a board to remember which page you're on or keep track of all the moves you miss. Move Trainer empowers you to go from the opening to the end game with confidence. It's a seamless, effective, and fun way to study chess. Choose from one of the largest online chess libraries in the world with hundreds of titles ranging from classic books through to our exclusive chessable courses, including over 100 free courses. Get expert insights from International Master John Bartholomew, Grandmaster Sam Shankland, International Master Christoph Sulecki, Grandmaster Simon Williams, World Champion Magnus Carlsen, and hundreds of other instructors. Get started now and join our growing community of over 100,000 chess enthusiasts at chessable.com. Chessable, take control of your journey towards chess mastery. yeah hello everyone how are you doing guys so after having a great training with the video on this hand and brain it's time to answer a lot of questions but first maybe i'll play some games let me see yeah can you send me the challenges uh better unrated please like three to five minutes maybe so if everyone is there Okay, I just want to find someone. Oh, the challenges, let me see. Nobody wants to play, right? That's uh, so convenient. Guys, if you're ready to ask the questions and uh, if you're ready to uh, send the challenges, send them. I'll play maybe some games before answering and then we'll go on with answering all of your questions. So please do. And uh, yeah, where's the YouTube link as well? Let me see. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, guys, can you uh, ask the questions in the chest twenty four 
chat, then it's easier for me to see everything. What is your favorite pizza toppings? Yeah, let's go. Cool. Okay, let me see. Oh, there are challenges. Okay, I'll play a few games, then see what's going on. Okay, it's hard to pronounce this guy's name. Huitzilopochtli, whatever. Anyway, let's see what he wants. Okay. Oh, classics. I don't have any sound somehow for the moves, but okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, well, the guy just goes for the Queen's Gambit, probably if he just sold the series, right? Okay, let's play Queen's Gambit then. Classics. Now, what do you think, guys? He knows this stuff? Or he doesn't? Mm-hmm. Okay, C6. Okay, let's go for queen c2 and try to attack. Maybe some h4 and knight g5, just in case. Why not? <laughs> okay. I know some players that would go for g4 here, but uh, I'll not do that, I guess. I'll just go for this and bishop d3. And then maybe knight g5, pen h4, or g4. Let's see how he reacts. Normally he should take with the e-pawn, but okay. Okay, he took with the e. Now let's try to mate him. Play some g4, g5 maybe. Mm, is it so? Yeah, now maybe g4. Let's try this. At least it's asking for g4, you know, this kind of h6 moves. Um, yeah, I cannot see the chat while I'm playing, right? Or I can. Not sure, actually. Okay, anyway, I can see the YouTube chat. Uh -huh. Yeah, guys. Uh, it's more convenient for me if you ask in the chat of the uh, chest 24. But while I'm playing, certainly I cannot see it, I guess. But uh, is it better actually that I answer in uh, like in YouTube of Chess24 or on the site? Because on the site, I cannot see the messages as I'm playing, which is normal. Okay, we'll try to play and answer some stuff. Okay, favorite uh, pizza toppings. I don't know, like... Um, Four cheeses, pizza, maybe salami and stuff. And um, what else? What else? What else? Depends, actually. But uh, certainly not pineapples. Yeah. Okay, I played Rook G1. Did he answer? No. So let me see the... Oh, yeah, I see the chat of Chess24 as well, so it's cool. Okay, so both YouTube and us. Oh, he played Knight of 6. Can I go H3 and win the Knight? Can do that. So we have plenty of time to talk, meanwhile. So, um, yeah, let me see this. Okay, how I'm doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you for this question. It wasn't hard to answer. The party is getting started. Okay, here we go. Don't you think the candidates should have been played remotely and proctored so that this way you could have joined the competition lately? Um, no, I think it should be played o over the board, but it should have been postponed in March, uh, as I asked Fide to do. And uh, now they just postponed it for one year with one lap played. This is really strange, but okay. 
I think enough said about uh, this candidate stuff, but yeah, that's uh, not good. So, um, yeah, remote is like is possible, but for the candidates, you know, when you have to decide, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's not the same, but uh, playing, uh, you know, is it fair if you play like, I don't know, like uh, some kind of uh, things that are like tennis or something, you cannot play it, uh, you cannot decide the title this way. I think it's very different still in chess. The online chess and, uh, you know, the OTB chess is very different. For deciding the world crown, I think it's better to have the OTB. But otherwise, for many tournaments, different, uh, differently structured, we're not ready, I think, for, uh, for this type of, um, you know, online tournaments where we should decide the crown of the world champion. Uh, for other events, like commercial events, we're trying. And once we get, uh, you know, used to it, then we can maybe switch to the, like, the candidates and all, all the other stuff. But for now, I think, uh, I mean, the good job is uh, done for now. And uh, we're trying this, uh, like the, the Magnus Tour and everything, like the, uh, the Champions Tour and all that stuff. And uh, once, uh, I don't know, we all get used to it, set all the rules, find out uh, how to proctor everything on the highest level, maybe soon with, uh, I don't know, ar arbiters present in the rooms where the players are playing and all that stuff. And uh, like I don't know, maybe it's even possible to play on the on the normal board, and uh, the moves will be just transmitted to your opponent. We used to play like this as well. Like for example, when you're playing the engine, um, I think I've played some like Shredder maybe in uh, I think in Germany in uh, Mainz. I've played I think Shredder there. Also played against uh, Deep Junior at some point in Italy. And uh, let's say, for example, there's a person in front of you and just makes a move for the compi. And in this case, can make just moves for your opponent. But it's still very different because you need to see the opponent. You need to feel the opponent like, you know, all this, uh, like the opponent's breath, as we say. And you have to feel it. And like, you know, you see the emotions after each move and all that stuff, which is important. So for now, I don't see how we can uh, really completely, uh, completely change uh, completely switch from OTB to uh, to online, but uh, we're trying our best. And uh, I think for now it works perfectly. And uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of commercial tournaments, the rapid tournaments, police tournaments and all that stuff. But for the classical tournaments, uh, we're not sure as yet, as far as I understand. It's not only my opinion. I've asked a lot of people uh, involved, both in organizations and all, you know, just the players as well. Yeah, okay, hope I, answered it enough this question so so let me just finish this game start the other one because otherwise i will lose on time while answering the questions even though my position is winning but still i have to do some moves Okay, so queen h2, g4, can I take on h3 and play bishop h4 maybe, and then rook f1. Mm. Let's try this first. Then queen h3 is threatening. That's completely winning. I mean, the queen is coming to f4, rook f1. Yep, this is clearly winning. Okay, so uh, yeah, bishop h4, he has to do something. Mm, not exactly. Not much, yeah, I'm taking this one. Taking all of his pieces already. This is winning, yeah. Okay, take this one. Okay, Bishop F6 is threatening, G4 is hanging, winning, and coming back to your questions. Let me see if he made a move. No. Okay, so this one I'll take. We'll take g4 then. Bishop f6 is coming. This is winning.
Yeah. Okay, guys, also, uh, please, can you send the unrated whenever you send me the challenge? And let me see what's, what chat is saying there. Um, okay, so uh, which is... Somia is asking. Uh, hey, Raja, which was your favorite, most memorable tournament so far? Yeah, World Cup, for sure. I think World Cup. Yeah. I mean, certainly, uh, result plays its role. But... Um, you know, I mean, yeah, result plays its role, but I like Hanteman-Sisk in general as a city. Uh, I know not many people agree with me because uh, it's, like, very cold there and so on. And uh, there are a lot of, like, like the distance is, like, kind of far from the hotel to the playing hall and all that stuff. But I somehow liked the city since um, I visited for the first time. Was it 2005? I think then 2007 next. Then also Olympia. I stayed there, I think, with the national team for... Uh, one month or something like that because at the time yeah there were like uh, 11 rounds or 13 rounds whatever i think 11 rounds yeah and we stayed there for a long time we came in advance and uh, we stayed there for like one month or something like that so everything was very uh familiar to me i know the city quite well and um i like it very much and especially i like it when it's like minus uh minus 20 minus 30 and stuff still in um, september and october it wasn't that cold it was like minus three four something so it was just fine around zero to minus four something like that yeah and um yeah i liked the the city i liked the i liked to play there always the olympiad as well was a very uh, nice event and we spent a lot of good time there with uh with the guys of our national team and uh yeah so especially this time i just loved it but i mean winning the world cup and being there for a long time um was just pleasant for me. I just liked it, you know. Uh, still, there was a huge pressure, certainly, throughout the event, but it was going good. And, uh, you know, somehow I felt this is my chance and I was trying to to take it. And uh, finally, that the fact that I won, which uh, which is very, uh, like, it's kind of amazing experience. Um, yeah, as you know, there are not many players that won the World Cup and certainly they're very strong, great players and so on. And uh, also, at the time, qualifying for the candidates was uh, was very nice to have it. And uh, already while I qualified, I was sure that physically it will be very hard for me to play against Ding Liren, Ding Lijen, sorry, which is the right way to pronounce his name. And um, yeah, I felt like kind of, what do you call it? Like in super mood elevated and so on, was like really happy about that so yeah i think this is the most memorable tournament uh let's be fair i had a lot of them like linares 2003 uh i didn't finish well there in that tournament but uh i won against kasparov there and also uh libe fide world championship uh, in 2004 was also amazing but uh certainly this one ended so well that uh this is the most memorable tournament for now so thank you somia for question and um uh, Let's go to another one. Otherwise, I'm answering one question for 15 minutes. So, let me see what else. Arjen is asking, how did you have no nerves while playing the uh, while playing the World Cup? No, I had my nerves, of course. I mean, it's always stressful, even if we're trying not to show it. It's still uh, it's still um, certainly very stressful, especially when you get into this uh, important matches that decide. Uh, it partly decides your career from time to time. And uh, in this case, you know, like the the quarterfinals, the semifinal, in the quarterfinals as well, like it was clear that uh, like the nerves are like super tense. It's uh, so close, uh, you know, to, to achieve the goal of, um, of the semifinal, trying to win it and qualifying for the candidates. And in general, I had strong opponent there as well. And... Uh, yeah, you know, once you get, like, I think in round, usually in round, like, three or four of the World Cup, you get just extremely strong opponents, sometimes in round two as well. And, uh, in fact, all of my opponents were very tricky players, and uh, it wasn't easy at all to beat them. Um, in the first round, I mean, you have mostly uh, the top players, they win their matches and they qualify uh, to the second round, but, you know, it's still quite complicated. From time to time, you have this, like, super tense matches as well there. 
also the fact that you can just make one mistake and then it's all over uh, really puts a lot of pressure. So in the World Cup, it's, uh, yeah, it's very hard with, with the nerves. They're very tense there, especially that you have to maintain this for like one month, which is, uh, which is extremely hard when you are trying to win the event. And um, let's say there is no recipe to, to maintain calm there. So this is very complicated. And uh, still now, let's say I won the tournament, but I don't have any special advice uh, how to maintain your calm there. Just depends. Uh, you know, you, you have to be also lucky at some point. And um, certainly things should work your way. And then you can pretend on winning this. And when they work your way, you never know. Because, I mean, I've played many World Cups and didn't succeed before. Uh, trying different methods. Trying uh, to make draws and play rapids and like tie breaks trying to win in all, all of the classical games and so on. So, and, and didn't succeed. And this time somehow succeeded. So, yeah. There is no clear recipe how to win the World Cup, unfortunately, for now. Um, yeah, so... Have you ever lost a game against a girl? Yeah, I did. I did. In my childhood, and also I lost against... Um, I've lost against uh, Judith um, in Engen Laban tournament. I think it was a super tournament in France. And there she just played a great game. And she won against me in Sveshnikov as white. She was an extremely strong player at the time, really. I mean, she was very, how to exactly put it? It's like, I mean, she was always very confident in her position. And uh, she was always sure that she's having a great uh, game. And even if not, I think she saw that in any position, she can just escape by the tactics. And her tactics were amazing. Uh, I remember analyzing games with her at the time. Uh, I mean, I met her a lot of times. We played, I think, some a lot of rapids and blitz as well and so on. But uh, she was an amazing tactical player, seriously. Like, uh, she just saw a lot of tactics, like a lot of tricks really nice i mean like i was impressed at the time when i was i was also a great tactician at the time and uh, this really impressed me a lot um yeah black shirt black seed black background also people are saying that i'm like a floating head there so for some probably it's more dark for, than for others but uh yeah okay i just uh yeah i can switch from from time to time from my brick wall to this kind of setup so it's fine and soon i think the the other posters are arriving so they will be um as a background there so it's cool um roger if you could transfer your elite skills to another game and be elite which game would you choose i think tennis maybe yeah I like watching tennis, but I would be very happy to be like a super tennis player, like the top tennis player, even though I don't know how I would handle, you know, all this um, uh, hard physical conditions that they're used to, them and the football players, soccer players, if you're in the US. So yeah, I think tennis player, I would prefer to be. What is your opinion about the future of classical chess? Um, well, I mean, about the future of OTB chess, I would say, really complicated. Like, um, I don't know when it starts, how it will start, and um, if there are enough sponsors, if it's possible to conduct the events. This thing that we see with um, all this um, um, special glass and so on that they use in the tournament, everyone is in masks and so on. It's very complicated to call it the usual OTB chess, so it's very different, and I'm not sure it will be easy to conduct these events. I think Waikanze is going to be played this year. Uh, hopefully, they're able to do it uh, okay there, but um, overall, the, the, the entire schedule um, is very messed up. I don't think it's uh, going to back... Uh, going. I mean, going to be uh, the same as we saw it before. But hopefully... Um, Hopefully there are some sponsors still left there to support everything because I think that also the entire world's economy is collapsing more or less. So. Uh, 
Uh, which style is the most difficult for you to play against? Highly theoretical, slow maneuvering, strategical. Mm, yeah, hard to answer this, but probably, probably just some players are playing it uh, better than others against me, but uh, um, can we call it just a tactical or not? I don't know. Well, I mean, certainly I prefer sharp games. Certainly I prefer sharp games. If we're talking about like the things that I prefer in chess, I prefer beautiful games, like with a lot of tactics, like, you know, all the sacrifices, attacks, double-edged games and so on. Um, but I also enjoy the technical part. And um, probably if we take by the percentage, I guess some kind of technical players, strategical uh, players are more successful against me. Uh, but it also, I think, um, Depends on the repertoire because I had a different one at the time. I'm having different now. So at some point I was just playing only Kings Indian, um, only French at some point, then only Sicilian. Now I can play, uh, you know, I'm playing the Berlin, the Sicilian, the French from time to time and uh, so on. So it's uh, a bit different. I'm also a bit different of a player now. Uh, so certainly uh, aging and changing some of my... Uh, Chess taste, probably trying to play some new stuff. And uh, yeah, it's just different now. Hard to say, but I say that uh, I would say that strategical players, maybe some technical players are playing better against me. If we uh, if we talk about, yeah, I mean, let's say Carlson, Kramnik, these guys maybe. So Magnus said in a recent interview that chess 960 should replace classical chess because of the draw percentage in classical chess. Yeah, just 9-6, I'm fine with it. We'd be happy to play it. Um, we should make a lot of tournaments, new tournaments, more tournaments maybe around the world uh, to try this chess 960. Actually, it's a Fisher chess, yeah? So he was uh, supposed, uh, you know, to find some good stuff, yeah? With the cloak and with the, you know, with the game. So yeah, yeah, I think it's, good. it's a good idea. I'm, I'm not sure it should really replace the classical chess because even in the chess 960, you still have the same one position that we're used uh, to play. So maybe this can be a, the main position in chess 960. Like, uh, I don't know, three rounds of uh, classical chess and then chess 960 replaces the rest. If you could hang out with any top level GM uh, that you don't know, who would you want to chill with? That I don't know. This is really hard to find one, right? I know all of them. All of them. So, uh, in this case, usually, usually I'm like you know, let's say on a tournament like World Cup, let's say, uh, I was with uh, Sergei Karyakin and Anish Giri. Um, national teams, usually uh, with Shahriar, and uh, yeah, but I know everyone from the top, I guess. I don't know well, maybe just Ali Reja, but uh, if we're talking about top 10 or, or which which top do you mean there? If you get a chance to challenge world champion, who would be your seconds? Um, Karyakin, I think. Mm, Chuchilov. Who else? I'm just thinking who else could be really helpful. Mm -hmm. Swidler, maybe? I mean, we're talking about this as uh, in terms that they would accept, right? So if they would accept, of course, let's say. But uh, in this case, I think uh, Karakin and Shilov, um, sure, and Swidler probably. So, who, according to you, is a tougher opponent, Carson or Kasparov? I mean, um, like, if we take my games, certainly Kasparov seemed to be kind of easier easier player for me. But, uh, yeah, probably Carson is tougher. I mean, at least tough, tougher for me. And um, in terms of results and also the style, probably.
when will the wolf pack return with Samai? Samai. Um, soon, I think. Very soon. I'm thinking. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, even before the event, maybe after the event, the skilling open. I'll see now. If I if I manage this few days, I will do that, the, the, the stream. And if not, then maybe after the tournament or um, depending on the result in the tournament, if I qualify, I mean, for the latest stages, then it will also change. But if I am not, maybe I can do some stuff um, around there. So we will see. I'll try to do my best anyway to play the tournament well and um, start streaming soon, as soon as possible, of course, as well. So uh, what is your favorite movie? Just curious. Um, yeah, this guy, which is was a gentleman called. Yeah, I liked it somehow, even though it's uh, very recent. Yeah, gentleman. Yeah, I would uh, I would say that one. Even though it's very recent, somehow it just uh, impressed me a lot. Guy Ritchie's gentleman. Um, favorite openings: Thomas Norberg, easy to answer. Kings Indian defense. As black. Um, mm -hmm. how to keep your mentality strong prayer, religion, meditation uh, yeah it depends of course if you're religious then religion may help a lot in these terms but it's also kind of meditation so I guess uh, meditation is the best answer and it can kind of consist of both other things as well like uh, it's still this kind of state that you have the state of your mind so uh, yeah meditation is good yeah you can ask Vidit as well. He knows stuff. He's professional. What, what do you call the, the people that meditate? Not meditator, I, I think, but uh, master of meditation, let's call him. According to you, where do you think you rank amongst um, chess players all time? I have no idea. Seriously. Never thought about it. But I'm somewhere. I'm somewhere. That that would be my answer. Somewhere nobody knows where. And I have, um, you know, no special opinion about it. I'm not that serious about myself. I'm just a slightly talented, hardworking chess player. That's it. Um, do you remember... Gashimov's game versus Krishuk in the World Team Championship 2009. Was it 2009 or 2010? Which one do you mean? World Team Championship. I think it was 2010, no? In Bursa, I guess, in January, something like that. Uh, we were shocked at some point. I mean, I was, I was bored too there, I think. And that was... Um, yeah, that was a very unusual game with the king march. Yeah, king march to to to, to b one or something. Yeah, with the king marching to b one, I think the one you mean. Yeah, that was an amazing game, and I think Vugar wasn't that upset after that game because it was really a, a cool game to play. Um, so let me see the questions there okay can i play just one game and also answer the questions i think i'm fine with it just there are some challenges we'll do one game and then okay let's go for this one yep Okay. Uh, my like the player I like the most, like in in the entire chess history, maybe is Tal. And then together with him, like place one, two. I think Fisher. But Tal, of course, is. Uh, yeah, something outstanding. Like, I cannot understand how, like, how there is such a player in the entire history of chess. It's just amazing. 
outstanding player, like completely different than any other player in the world. Maybe Bronstein was kind of close to, to, to his style, but still. Tal is, yeah, I don't know. I'm very impressed by Tal. So, let's try to bring the knight to g3. Then put the bishop on g5, h4, and uh, attack the f6 knight. What a plan. What a plan. So knight g3, I want to play some bishop g5 at some point, and maybe bishop h4. And sacrifice on g5. That would be my plan. So let's see what he wants to do. So let me see the, let me see the chat there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, d5 is not bad at all. Actually, a very good move. Hmm. What should I do now? Probably mess it up a bit. Okay, queen e2. Let's play according to plan. Bishop g5 is the move next. Hope he doesn't play something good. Okay. Goes for not bad at all, bishop a6. Let's try this. And now we hope for the sacrifice, right? On g5. Mm -hmm. And queen to f3. I would go for castle long for at some point and then... Yeah, I mean, also knight h5 is probably threatening. Okay, let me see if I got this thing as well. Yep. So, okay. I don't know. He wants to play g5 or not? No. Okay, let's go for this. And then, um, yeah, I don't know how I will proceed with knight f5, but okay. I've played a bad move, and that's okay, probably. I have to play just faster. Why would I play castle long, you know? It's completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. Can probably already sacrifice something, but um, not sure what exactly. Danger, danger is there. Mm, how can I defend this guy there? Yeah, he's playing good game. Go for this. And for this, I will probably bring my king to f1, whatever, trying to escape this attack. Okay, takes. And this is good. Yep. Okay. So, um, where was the chat, actually? Just a moment. Let me see. Guys, can you send uh, the chat link to the to the uh, YouTube, please? I'll just be back there. On Chess24 uh, chat. Or maybe... Yeah, just a moment. Let me see. Okay, it's here, I think. Okay, no need, I found it. All good. So, um, yeah, let me see what were the questions. So, Priyanshu, yeah, thank you very much for the game as well. Thank you. You were having a good position, probably. Just this... Um, 
Um, I don't know, this G6 was just bad, but uh, otherwise it's very unclear. Okay, so guys, can you send them the, the questions here as well? I'll see also the chat uh, in YouTube. There are more questions probably there. Uh, Stem Stem is asking, do you think Shamkir chess will be held next year in Azerbaijan? Uh, Shamkir chess next year in Azerbaijan? Yeah, probably there is a chance. If they do it in May or maybe uh, summer, probably there is a chance. But still not sure. Not sure. So. Um, Julius Peter is asking if I can play against him. Yeah, but Julius Peter, the point is that I want to play uh, against everyone, actually. But now it's like the questions, Q&A. So please send your send your questions here, like uh, all of your messages in the chat with um, Chess24. Uh, on YouTube also, I'll try to see some of them. Kick424 was asking uh, why I am a Trump supporter. And uh, his message was deleted, but I'm not Trump supporter at all. So I don't know why this uh, comes up. Only because I saw that uh, I think Trump will win the election. Yeah. And I'm still not sure about the results. But uh, officially, I think uh, they say that Biden won. So let's just wait for the for all the confirmations. But I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm just completely uh, uh, neutral, just watching uh, the US elections. That's it. Um, do you want to play versus Alpha Zero? Oh, oh, oh. It's like uh, for fun, maybe, but there will not be much fun because uh, you'll just get a good beat there, will be destroyed. And um, I'm not sure it's just a great experience, but just, you know, to see the way um, it approaches the game, sees the game, and um, understands the game, sees the tactics, knows the best moves almost everywhere. Uh, yeah, in this terms, yes. But otherwise, you know, it's just getting a hard beating there. Will destroy you, and uh, I'm not sure if it's so good for the confidence. But for just fun, understanding that you will still lose, just trying to play against uh, this kind of machine would be nice to see uh, the way it understands chess. Yeah. Yeah, the, the favorite chess player in history, I've answered this already. Who's your favorite chess player? So Tyler and Fisher. Supervin90 is asking, do you think it's good to practice reading chess books without a board? Yes, certainly. Uh, as you really need imagination to see the positions while you're calculating as well, it will help a lot. And um, certainly you should practice this kind of stuff. Yeah, like solving puzzles um, without the board, just from the diagram. Uh, calculating far and um, reading and seeing the diagrams and the comments to them, remembering the, you know, the kind of motifs and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important. Do that. It will not, uh, I mean, don't do it the whole day, but I mean, just uh, from time to time, of course, you can do that because otherwise you'll just get too tired, too fast, uh, trying to, you know, see the games um, in your head all the time. Like, you know, it's, it's complicated, but from time to time, it's good, especially when you have the games in the magazines with diagrams explained and all that stuff. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, chair CC thrown out. So kind of chest thrown out, probably he meant. So, Tamar, I really want to travel after COVID to your country. Is there a good open tournament for amateurs? Uh, yeah, I think they are there. They were, but uh, now I'm not sure about the tournament schedule. Probably there is no schedule at all, and everyone is waiting for this uh, situation to resolve. But at some point, uh, there were different ones. Yeah, I think there was some Baku open. There was also Nakhchivan open, and uh, there are some. Yeah. So uh, you're always welcome. We'll be happy to see you in Baku or Nakhchivan, wherever. The open is okay. How would you uh, brain damage says is asking how would you divide your train nowadays if you were a 2000 player and want to improve your chess? I would probably go for tactics, a lot of tactics, solving a lot of tactics, practice, and uh, probably. 
probably opinion repertoire together with just um, studying all this like uh, strategical, strategical um, you know basics, and uh, which are important. And I think you ha you can just uh, I don't know you can just uh, separate it like in gym whatever like uh, this day you do legs the other day you do these muscles and that these muscles and so on. So you can just do like I don't know three days of techniques, three days of opinions, three you know, and all that stuff. And you uh, maintain this kind of schedule throughout the, the months. Will be nice, but certainly you, you should switch between these three, I guess, to become a better player, almost on all levels. But on two thousand, I guess is uh, yeah, it's important. Okay, let me see the rest. Okay, on YouTube. Shaval Sharihan is wondering if you can pronounce my name. I don't know. I guess I did, but not sure if it was correct. Yeah. So I think you should become a more practical chess player, especially nowadays. Practical, you know, vision is more important than anything else. Um, the rest, you know, knowing all the theory and uh, being a not that great practical player, once it gets off track and you have to uh, to play on your own and it's uh, it's it's the most complicated part especially on the club level because some some players are strong enough to maintain uh, like the average level and with the great opinion preparation for example they can uh, still maintain uh, like a good rating and you know have a good positions all the time then play uh, their plays maybe so less strong after in the middle game but still they are great i mean great or good players and uh, they can maintain level this way by uh, really knowing theory too far and like um, not having too many problems. But uh, still, it's complicated if you're not that great practical player. So I think first practical player, second opinions, and um, this is the way I think it should be. Okay. So let me see who else is there. How to stop blundering in winning positions is hard, even for the top players. But uh, yeah, you should just work uh, on your uh, practical skills. It's not about uh, blundering in the winning positions. You should stay certainly focused till the end, until your opponent uh, just resigns. You should be uh, super motivated. I mean, you know, winning the game is just when he resigns, yeah, more or less. You shouldn't relax uh, before that. So, uh, NSPGK 2020 says, Roger, I just learned that I became a premium with your random code. Thank you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, guys, uh, there are a lot of perks in this uh, Chess24 premium. So you should switch to that, I think. And also, if you want to support all that, uh, I, I would say that we're doing it all together now because we're like kind of one team for now. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, the store helps a lot. So uh, yeah, if you want to support and uh, enjoy all the features on the site, so you should certainly uh, switch to the premium. Uh, and uh, of course, as you saw, uh, for those, um, you know, for these players, that, let's say on my YouTube channel and so on, they did also a lot for, for, for many players that uh, could not afford, let's say, the premium memberships. They did a lot of good stuff and uh, gave a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of subscriptions as well that, uh, let's say, some of the players, including me, we were giving uh, out on the on my YouTube channel and so on. So they do a lot of cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, hopefully we manage to make a great uh, chess store as well. So you are all guys welcome. So let me see what else. What else was uh, CT Hulu is asking? Was your win versus Anand in the Poison Pawn Nidorf your most theoretically important game? You mean this mate in uh, how many moves? Fifteen or less? Twelve? In a Blitz Championship was it, or which one do you mean? Yeah, CT Hulu. Can you just uh, explain which one do you mean? Because I made some, I played some game against him in the Poison Pawn. Um, and uh, I won in like 12 moves or something, but it was Blitz.
Um, go, go, go. Twenty two is asking hi, Tamer. Could you tell the reason why Azeri strong players, Mamidiar, Mamedov, and and you, of course, have all more or less the same superb uh, style with King Indian, sharp openings, and playing super aggressive attacking style. Um, because I think mostly uh, the um, chess school in Baku and chess school in general in Azerbaijan, it was um, kind of tactical, you know. Including Kasparov was part of it. So there were a lot of players like who liked really strategic chess, like kind of positional chess and so on. And there were like maybe five players that were kind of you know super tactical, I think. And um, oh, there were some international masters that Kasparov also knew quite well, like Alek Pavlenka and the Karsunsky and all these guys, and he knew them well. Kaspar was like the representative of this tactical school, sharp school, like attacking chess, active chess, and so on. And um, later on, also with all the players, after Kasparov already was not uh, living in Baku, and uh, he became a ch world champion and so on, he was not living already at some point in Baku. And um, we had this gap between his chess and uh, the, the modern chess of Azerbaijan. And uh, probably... Some of the players were still very tactical, but with our generation, I mean, um, I've started certainly as a very tactical, sharp player. Then I changed on the top level quite much because, I mean, they were ruining all of your tactical ideas and plans and so on and became kind of um, a mixed player. So uh, I would say like uh, maybe more universal in some term, but let's be fair that still... Uh, Still, will still I'm more tactical than than positional anyway. Even though I try to pretend and play some uh, dry games and so on, but still it's like in my soul that I'm playing this uh, kind of sharp and tactical style, and I enjoy it the most. And uh, since then, you know, the school somehow the of the new players, the the elite players, and our national team, we all became kind of tactical players. We enjoyed it so much, like a lot of blitz players, like Kings Indian. Sharp players, let's say Shahriyar is not a Kings Indian player that much, but uh, he's a very um, he's a very uh, sharp player, of course. So I don't know, but somehow uh, later it developed this way. So we became like many of us were the sharp players. I think Vugar, including Vugar as well. Vugar was a sharp player. He liked the tactical uh, positions. His calculation was very on a very high level, of course. And uh, yeah, we had this like three grand master of 2700 uh, playing super sharp chess. And uh, the other team members, of course, Rauf and uh, and other players are more tactical as well. Okay, so yeah, I mean that game was cool, but uh, it was a blitz game, so he immediately uh, had some problems, Anand in that game, and um, yeah, he got into trouble quite fast. I've made it him, but uh, it's a rare case, of course. In the classical chess, certainly he will not. Uh, he would not, um, uh, you know, play this way. And um, if you're if we're talking about the poison pawn variation, the same in Nidorf, I think um, in terms of preparation, I had a great game against Grishuk in Bilisi. You can check it out. This one, this one was really nice. I, I really enjoyed it because everything I had prepared the day before the game and um, um, you know the, the day when we played the game, of course, during the game. Uh, I mean, not during the game, but I mean, before before playing the game on the same day, um, more or less, I've somehow he forgot the theory, but uh, I worked this line as well. So, I mean, I knew what I'm doing. And in that game, I managed to win also quite fast, even though he uh, forgot the move order. But still, it was nice to catch him because he's one of the players that remember theory well and the well of theory and yeah, a great neither player. Yeah. But anyway, um, for the um, for the King's Indian, I see a lot of questions all the time for the King's Indian. Uh, so for the King's Indian, for like I think that uh, certainly Zurich, Zurich 1953, you should study in terms of just reading more or less, not not, not study, but reading like the, the ideas and so on explained by Bronstein and uh, uh, having a lot of examples on the very important games that they played there, the candidates tournament. But um, Beside that, of course, uh, 
you can see probably I don't know if it exists in English, but I guess I guess it exists in English, like the Goofields books as well. Um, you should certainly study the top players of the King's Indian. In my situation, I was a kid, so I was not the top player at the time. So I was not uh, I was not uh, doing something perfect there. So I was studying all of these uh, great players that played the King's Indian, including uh, Gary and Fisher. And uh, yeah, it influenced a lot. Of course, studying great players in the in this opening is very important. And reading their comments, probably you can find a lot of, as well in uh, Kasparov's books there. You can find a lot of um, uh, games he played himself and also Fisher. And um, for, from, from the recent times, yeah, uh, it's strange to say, but uh, yeah, my games, a lot of, a lot of them consists, I mean, consists of a lot of ideas, very typical and usual for the, for the Kings Indian. Uh, Nakamura, of course, Grishuk as well. Uh, who else is the? Who else was playing this? A lot of a lot of uh, players were playing this, but uh, just trying to recall who was playing on the top level. Not too many, yeah, not too many. But um, certainly, certainly, it's a great opening. I think to study. I think it's one of the most exciting openings in chess. And I really, uh, it's not it's not just because I'm a like kind of considerate kind of expert there. But it's just because I really think so, and I feel that uh, it's really strategical opening, tactical boss. It's like, yeah, it's um, it's just a separate life, you know. It it, it has in chess. It's like, it's, there is a king's Indian life, and it's uh, completely different than all the other stuff. Um, yeah, so. So what are the other mentioned? Tal, as one of your two favorite players, will love him. Do you think his 15th ranking on Janus 50, on Jan's 50s greatest, underrates him? Um, well, guys, it's like um, it's a, it's the question by why why must I lose to this bogus and so on? Well, if you're asking me, I would put him on number one. It's not that he's the strongest world champion, but I think this is the most outstanding players of all times many factors the fact that uh, he became such a young champion of course plays its role especially in the times where everyone was considered to be uh, super strong when they're like in their 30s 40s and so on um and then tal came and became a champion so young but beside that of course the style he outplayed batwinik he showed completely different approach to chess just like completely different approach just like you come and you show just something that nobody saw before kind of and to my mind when i was a kid and studying his books and studying all the stuff he did in chess uh the moves the type of thinking you know that the way he approached the match against patwinik he was also as you know um not doing well with the uh, health issues and so on it was hard for him this is brilliant. I mean, just look at his match against Batwinik. And um, yeah, I don't know. To my mind, he's the most outstanding chess player ever. Not, once again, I want to point, not the strongest chess player of all times, but uh, one of the most outstanding players. I mean, like the most outstanding player to my mind. Um, yeah. So what do you think is the right super win 90 is asking what do you think is the right approach to openings in bleeds for bleed should I choose a tactical opening to gain the initiative but may require more time to think um, a complicated position or a more simplified opening I think you should um, you should find some kind of uh, setup for you that uh, works well and you know it well so you just practice it much as much as you can and you know what you are doing like first 10 15 moves or something like, I don't know, 8, 10 moves. You know where you are putting pieces more or less. You know the um, uh, main tricks and you don't um, miss a lot in the opening. And then you can just play the game. But certainly you should uh, have like, uh, you know, um, one or two systems like this that you play and you enjoy playing. And um, then it will be just easier for you when you when you know how to um, develop well. Because in the openings in Blitz, sometimes you miss something, you completely... Uh, you know, misplay something, even top players, anyone. 
can do that. And um, if you have your system that you play all the time, you know where to put pieces and so on. You just play from the middle game more or less, which helps you to avoid um, any opening mistakes and also gives you the possibility to play the middle game and you know to, to gain time, certainly, in the opening, which is also important. Okay, let me see the rest. In US, only if Fisher uh, reached the star status with general public, did Kasparov reach star status in uh, Baku, Azerbaijan at the time? Yeah, at the time, uh, as you know, Azerbaijan was uh, part of the Soviet Union. And um, of course, Kasp I mean, it was the most popular game in the in the country or something, at least one of the most important games and so on. Karpo was the world champion before him. And of course, Kasparov in, uh, in Azerbaijan, he reached like a super star status, like everywhere, everybody was approaching him, was uh, like asking for the autograph and stuff. Yeah, of course, of course he was, at the time, probably with, together with the football players, he was number one star. Yeah, of course he reached that status. Um, which one, Patsera? Which one did I not answer? Tell me. Let me see. Trying to find the questions I didn't answer from Pat Zero. Uh, Pat Zero is saying maybe some fans and followers consider you as a draw master as your many uh, draw games and many events, or you are not the attacker who makes his opponents tired by facing him. Means you give the impression that you are not so motivated to reach high ranks and leading the tur in tournaments. Sorry for the bad phrasing of questions. That's fine, that's clear. Well, um, no, at some point I was explaining this. At some point I certainly had um, uh, the lack of motivation. I was not um, really, I was trying to, how to say, I was trying to um, overcome this hard period where I was um, not motivated after London 2013. I felt like, um, before I was playing all the games for the win, was trying to win all the games, was trying to uh, uh, to attack, to be like, you know, at least to, to show a great result. And after London, somehow this motivation was uh, was not there. I've lost uh, my motivation for a long time. It was really hard to come back. So I was trying to, you know, I was afraid of losing, afraid of, you know, losses and all that stuff. It was very hardly um, uh, any kind of chess close to what I've showed before. And... Um, I was trying to avoid losses as much as I can, trying to find myself again, top level chess. And uh, this was the case. This was the case mostly. So uh, I still didn't like the way what I'm doing, but uh, this came just kind of naturally to me. I was trying to avoid losses as, as much as I can. Immediately when there was some kind of unclear position, I was uh, trying to simplify it and all that. Yeah. And then uh, then uh, I, I tried to, to change, you know, through these times. It was hard times for me as well. It was not that I'm happily doing all the draws. Yeah was different was just trying to find myself uh, showing myself that I'm able not to lose to anyone in the world if I if I want to and uh, this was a hard hard psychological uh, period for me so uh, I went through it and it wasn't uh, wasn't easy also I know how hard to make a draw against uh, any opponent in the world if you are let's say black against uh, against them and um you know, showing myself that I can avoid losses against the top players in the world once again for a long, long time uh, gave me some kind of boost before I uh, managed to recover fully and, uh, you know, come into shape and uh, be able to, uh, uh, you know, like, uh, like, you know, like this, um, like this war games, you know, you had some kind of loss, let's say, at some point, and then uh, you regroup. You completely have to come back into power and uh, and strike, and in this case, I had to regroup uh, all of my forces, um, yeah, and uh, to be able to win games again against the top players in the world, to be able uh, to sit against top players in the world and feel that I can beat them, I can uh, show the best result, and so on. This was very hard moments, but I mean, they, they were very hard moments, but. Uh, oh, I didn't feel good about them uh, myself. It wasn't like uh, I was happy making all the draws or something. Not at all. Mm. 
Okay, let me see the rest. CC Chess is asking, no, other players have been extremely popular with the public. Have you heard of more Firoshevsky? Yeah, of course, of course, more Firoshevsky. Of course, I've heard about them. I've seen their games, of course, know some stories about them. But, um, well, I think Fisher maybe was the, the, the most, yeah, the most kind of star player in the world at some point, and US as well, of course. Um, this is a YouTube user question. What is the recipe for your tea? tea bag hot water and uh, positive emotions while you're preparing the tea itself otherwise it doesn't work okay uh sergey rahman is asking them are you going to anytime soon to organize virtual training camp i mean 2021 yeah 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 we had to stop the work of the academy i will certainly uh announce some stuff on the one of the streams but um uh, probably you're aware of the situation we had at some point uh, i mean there was a war in uh, in azerbaijan and uh yeah it was very complicated and i was not in the mood at all to start any camps especially that you know i cannot talk without being uh you know kind of funny talking some jokes and so on and i think it was really inappropriate moment i was not in the mood at all to, to do this all this stuff and uh, if I do stuff, I do stuff. I'm trying to do it kind of uh, perfectly, like kind of trying to do my best at least to make it perfect. And this time, I, I was sure I'm unable to do that, so we stopped it. And uh, yeah, of course, we will we will come back with the with the academy and all these uh, plans that we had there. Nothing is stopped. Everything is okay. Thank you for that question. I know that you're very knowledgeable about the Dutch and especially the stone wall. What drove you to adding it to your repertoire? What is the spirit of this opening? Um, the point was that uh, my dad wanted to avoid any kind of preparation on the, you know, on these tournaments where I've played like the European championships, world championships, like kids, they all had uh, the good professional play, uh, like um, the, the coaches. And my dad was thinking that the practical play is more important. So he tried to uh, put me some openings, like um, show me some openings that are not, too theoretical, too theoretical, and uh, uh, to put like kind of emphasis on the middle game, on the practical part, and uh, we were working on like so-called general chess, not the openings, and I think it helped me a lot to win this uh, championships. I was very good in the middle game. One player, GM Aryan is asking. One player from top 10 you would like to see on stranded island okay let me see how the top 10 list looks now okay here it's easy to answer mm. okay it's easy to answer for this uh this will will go with shahriar now and um Let me see, so this, this is the top 10. Okay, so it's nine players, as I'm one of the top 10 players. Or can we include Giri there? Because I'm one of these players. So if we include Giri, it's Giri. And um, the best company out of this top 10 that I see would be, I think, um, Carlson, Giri, Shahriar. Yeah. So of this top 10. And then you can think about if I I should pick up being the top 10 player, I should pick up just out of nine players. I would pick in this case, uh, Shahriar, which is obvious would be, would be easier. And if, for example, we go a bit down to the list, I would pick um, Giri and Karakin, uh, which are my most uh, usual, you know, company. And certainly if we could take someone else, uh, Dominguez, and okay, I think it's out like out of top twenty, whatever. Actually, Naka is there. Naka is a funny guy. Oh, Naka, yeah, he would probably make a lot of uh, streams, and it would not be boring at all. Yeah. Oh, it's hard question. Hard question. Now I see the list. It's very hard. Giri Karakin, you know that I'm very uh, like kind of uh, close with close with them, and uh, yeah, they're my friends, and um, Shahriar as well as my friend. So. Uh, 
it's an easy choice. But uh, there are also some funny, funny players there in top 20. Nakamura with his streams would completely change the, you know, the approach to the stranded island, especially if there, if there is an internet. I would see the master at work life. Oh, Kramnik student is asking, Kai Raja choose between Sagar Shah or Samay Raina? Anish or Vidit? Wow. Impossible. Impossible. Mission Impossible 4. Um, Amaury M is asking Tamur if you could spend one day with the person of your choice, excluding family, friends, who would it be? Alive or dead, chess player or not? Um, well, yeah, it's not an easy question, yeah? It's so, so hard to answer this because so many great great people there were in, in the history. Maybe. Okay, Leonardo da Vinci for sure there. Maybe uh, Napoleon. Yeah, probably. Alohin Battery, how can I answer this kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, like, like Raja, another YouTube user just made a donation and said, why are you so savage and sexy? Oh my God. Thank you very much. Anyway. Yeah. So, what else? Last question, yeah? Okay, let me see. Mm, there are some arguments there between the members uh, because they ask each other what is the, who's the best player, Tal Fischer and all that, all that. So let me see. So guys, uh, send them, send the question, please. I want to know what is the question from YouTube or the, the chat. This is the last one. So you can send it in chess 24 or maybe Alokin battery can uh, send some from YouTube here. But I hope the second one is not about uh, sexiness. So where's the question? Uh -huh. Let me see, let me see. They're not coming into the into the stream that I'm seeing here, like the chest 24, the, the, the questions there. No new questions, right? I think I've answered. Uh, GM Iron said something from YouTube, uh, like Super Chat, it was the position of Azerbaijan Chess Federation, your personal decision to withdraw from candidates tournament, uh, full support I had from the Federation. There was a letter to FIDE and everything. This is, um, I cannot call it the last question because this is, uh, we cannot count this. Nope. Favorite music artists. Okay, let's go for this. So I think uh, the bands like Queen, um, Beatles, maybe. Nowadays, um, yeah, I'm actually listening to whatever you like. I mean, so many things like, uh, I don't know, like from Lana Del Rey to, I don't know, Dua Lipa or I like everything actually. Yeah, like, um, depends. If there is a good song, I'm listening to it and that's it. But um, 
I wouldn't say that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. from recent ones, what would I, I wouldn't say I'm listening too much now, but I'm listening to any good songs like, um, what exactly I'm listening to actually. Lana Del Rey from time to time, but it's like kind of sad. Um, Beyonce maybe, yeah. Yeah, Shakira, all this. Shakira is like uh, probably the best times I had in my life. Uh, I've listened to Shakira's uh, songs and uh, up to now, yeah. And uh, Beyonce is like, yeah, whenever I'm not in the mood, I put Beyonce 7 Eleven. Yeah. And then it's uh, it's impossible to be in a bad mood after that. So that's cool. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's okay yeah, for today. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Thank yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for um, for being uh, with me today. Thank you for your questions. I'm sorry if I didn't answer all of them, but I tried the most. At least what I've seen in the chat of uh, Chess24 that I'm using for, for reading the questions. Um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the for being a great public, for really uh, having and sending me a great uh, questions. Uh, nothing offensive, which uh, I also like to read from time to time, as you know, on my YouTube channel, but still. Uh, thank you, every, everyone from the uh, premium members. And if you are not premium, of course, uh, you should uh, become premium because it gives you a lot of perks from the Chess24 website and uh, a lot of things. And you can also support this way the, um, the great things that Chess24 is doing. And uh, beside that, of course, beside all of the banter blitzes and everything, I think uh, there are so many things there, like learning chess, playing against top players, you know, doing all the stuff that we're doing now and so on. So go premium, enjoy Chess24, and uh, certainly it's not our uh, last meeting. We're coming uh, to be, you know, quite uh, active on Chess24 these days and probably the whole year. So thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye and have a great evening. And queen takes F3. Oh, what is going wow. on? Oh, this is going to be a fortress. I just don't see any hopes at all. This is very easy. Just rook back and forth. Taking chess to the next level. Wow. Wow. Wow, yeah. Nothing else to say. Wow. Creating the future of the sport. Introducing the Champions Chess Tour. Ten months. Ten tournaments. The world's best players online and on TV.